Okay, this is the safety and security portion of the exam review for the operator certification test. So, to begin with, remember that the text in red is are things that you should be uh, aware of that may show up on the test. So, flaggers, barricades, traffic cones are the most common traffic pedestrian warning systems. Barricades should be placed around uh, specific distances around the construction site. Uh, flagger should be 100 feet from the workplace. And the speed of traffic would affect the spacing. If the faster the traffic, the further the spacing needs to be to give more warning time. On the job injuries, uh, failure to pay close attention to the job at hand is one of the uh, significant uh, causes of job on the job injuries. Uh, each individual is responsible for their own personal safety and everyone around the workplace is responsible for safety as a whole. The supervisor is responsible for the safety program so remember that on the test that you're not responsible for the safety program the supervisor is. They, they implement it and make sure that it's, uh, it's in place and, and followed. Uh, the, you need trenching and shoring to uh, prevent injury or loss of life. Uh, if you have a trench that's four feet deep, it usually requires a means of exit. And the exits or ladders must be provided at least every 25 feet. The ladders need to extend three feet above the surface excavate, ex, excavation. The soil needs to be at least two feet from the edge of the trench. Uh, there's three means of preventing cave-ins, that's sloping, shielding, and shoring. And the trench wall protection is needed for trenches four or five feet deep. Uh, the pipe should be adequately blocked and stacked to keep it from falling. Uh, for first aid, for respiratory failure, you should know CPR. For bleeding, you should use direct pressure and pressure points to stop the bleeding. For first degree burn, you use ice or cold water. And if, if a victim is in shock, you want to lay them down and cover them with a blanket to keep them warm. Uh, you should have annual training in CPR and first aid. Hydrogen sulfide is rotten egg smell. And if you smell that in a vault, you should not enter it until you've uh, put a blower in there and got a good air exchange and, and uh, evacuated the, the hydrogen sulfide from the vault. Uh, blowers are the most effective means to reduce your atmospheric hazards. And you should ventilate the, the vault until it's reached a minimum of 19.5%. Vaults are considered hazardous. They have, they're prone to condensation on electrical equipment, which can cause a shock hazard. They can collect toxic gases, and they're subject to flooding. Uh, you want to calibrate the air quality in the vault and after ventilating you should retest the air. Lock out and tag out. Uh, your lock and tag is uh, you should place that on electrical panels when it's being worked on. If you have a pump or a piece of equipment that's electrical it should have them on compressed springs, gear motors, uh, distribution valves. All of these types of things should be locked and tagged out when somebody is working there and, there's, and it presents a uh, safety hazard. Even though the, the circuit may be off, you need to also understand that there could be control voltage in there that could shock you, uh, even though you've uh, tripped the knife switch. Uh, the uh, tag needs to be signed by the person that places it on the equipment, and only they can remove it. Uh, for accident prevention, uh, the conditions around the work site can prevent accidents. The attitude of the employees uh, can also prevent accidents, and a good safety program is a method to prevent accidents. For fire extinguishers, type there's types A, B, C, and D. C is for electrical fires. Uh, for type C fires, you should use a dry chemical or carbon dioxide. There's an ABC type for multiple use. And you don't want to use water-based extinguishers on an electrical fire due to shock. Uh, fuses and breakers. If you have a, uh, 
a breaker that trips or a fuse that blows out, uh, you should try to determine the cause of why it's doing it. Uh, they're found in electrical panels and you should also keep electrical contacts that are dusty and burned. They should clean them to prevent fires. Uh, coupling guards help prevent uh, accidents from rotating pieces of equipment. Uh, they're placed on couplings and, and other types of uh, machinery that, that rotates. And, and only trained staff should work on motors. Uh, you want to lock out and tag out the, the equipment before you uh, work on it. On the management, uh, your management should provide a safe working environment. They should provide you the proper tools and equipment. They should provide you training. And they should also provide you with the material safety data sheet, which is MSDS, and it's part of the right to work, right to know laws. The uh, self-contained breathing apparatus should be used on chlorine leaks. You should store them away from the chemical buildings. Uh, you should perform inspections on the SCBAs, and you should record when they were inspected. And uh, the length of, of time you have on a cylinder depends on the breathing patterns. Uh, a heavy person uh, may require more oxygen or somebody who's in a stressful situation could also breathe more and, and require more oxygen. The at a treatment plant, the safety there, you should be, the operator should be familiar with the electrical apparatus at the work site. Uh, operators should also be familiar with the chemical handling and the types of chemicals stored. They should also have a knowledge of the specific hazards that are unique to the facility. You should be careful around a wellhead uh, to prevent contamination or pollution of the well. You want to prevent accidents to the operators. Vandalism, you should investigate graffiti uh, for gang activity or somebody uh, who's anti-government. You should record the condition. If you have uh, a hit like that, you should test the quality of the water to make sure it hasn't been tampered with. And you want to report damages and questionable conditions to your supervisor and possibly the police, law enforcement. Uh, there's a couple of repair kits for chlorine cylinders. There's an A kit for 150-pound cylinder and a B kit for ton cylinders. C kits are for train cars. Uh, this is the type of equipment you should have on a utility vehicle, safety equipment, tools, warning flags, flares, flashlights, first aid kits. They're all part of the safety items that should be on a utility vehicle. Safety inspection reports. Uh, the person who conducted the inspection should have their name on it. Uh, you should uh, be skilled in, in uh, overlooking safety features. They, they, the reports are a help to prevent overlooking those. And it also provides a record of who inspected the safety features. Tank safety. Before you enter a tank, you want to test the atmosphere. You want to use safety belts and harnesses and provide adequate ventilation. Vulnerability assessments are a systematic process to evaluate susceptibility and that is uh, for uh, attacks or intentional uh, uh, things that may be uh, placed on your system. Uh, a vulnerability assessment and an emergency response plan should be viewed by only need-to-know personnel. Uh, it determines the types of assailants, threats, and probability and the requirement uh, was 3,300 or more systems are required to do that. For lab safety, uh, acids, bases, toxic materials are part of uh, working in a lab. You should be aware of fire and explosives, cuts and bruises, electrical shock, and uh, heat and chemical burns. Uh, beware of the hazardous chemicals. Use caution when cleaning up spills. Uh, use care when you're handling glassware. Never use, uh, never pipe at liquids with your mouth. Use a rubber suction bulb. Uh, good hygiene, personal hygiene is important. You want to use your personal protection, your safety glasses, rubber gloves, and apron. Uh, ferric chloride is a very corrosive material. It's a coagulant. Should take extra precautions to prevent splashing. You want to use eye protection, rubber gloves, and protective clothing. And if it's spilled on your skin, you should flush it with large amounts of water. Fluoride, if a victim is exposed to large amounts, should be removed from the area. 
operators should know that they should know the hazards contained in the material safety data sheets. Al alum is a mild corrosive. It uses rubber gloves. And it's dustproof clothing. Uh, uh, if you're exposed to uh, this types of exposure uh, for longer than eight hours, it's considered hazardous. You need to use respiratory equipment around the alum dust. You need to use eye protection. You need to ventilate the area. And you never want to use alum and quick lime on the same conveyor. It could, uh, there's a potential for explosion. Caustic soda is a strong caustic alkali. It's very hazardous, very reactive. It dissolves human skin. It also generates heat when it's mixed with water. Uh, it reacts with amphoteric metals, generating hydrogen gas, which is flammable or explosive. And it also, you need to use special precautions when you handle caustic soda. Uh, the chemical safety for acids, the uh, chemicals are uh, visible destruction or irre irreversible damage to the skin tissue at the point of contact. Uh, swallowing can damage your esophagus and stomach. You want to wear personal protective equipment. You want to flush the area with clean water. Use sodium bicarbonate to neutralize acids and you add acid to the water so it so the the uh, um, acid doesn't splash on you. Polymers are used as a coagulant and fil filter aid. You want to keep polymer dust off the floor. They will create very slippery surfaces on the floors. You want to use an inert absorbent material such as sand to clean up the spills. Potassium permanganate is a strong ox oxidizing agent. They use it for taste and odor. It will react easily with organic materials. It will ignite when it comes in contact with antifreeze, sawdust compounds, and many other materials. All lubricants and fuels are potential fire hazards. Uh, you store separately from other chemicals in a cool, dry place, and you want to wear dust masks and rubber gloves when you're handling potassium permanganate. Activated carbon is the most volatile powder. You want to keep it away from uh, chlorine uh, and potassium permanganate. Possible instantaneous, spontaneous combustion can happen. The main problems are dust and fire control. Uh, it will burn with intense heat and there's no smoke or visible flame. Uh, you want to keep the electrical equi equipment clean from it. Uh, carbon dust can short circuit and cause fires. And you want to use explosion proof electrical equipment around it. You don't want to use sawdust to absorb liquids. Uh, powder activated carbon is the most volatile, volatile powder and methane is the most common combustible gas. So, uh, storage tanks, you're buried and elevated above ground. Uh, pressure, your pressure tanks are your hydropneumatic type tanks. Uh, you want to clear the areas uh, around your facilities of uh, tall vegetation, overhanging trees, uh, landscaping that can hide intruders. Uh, you want to trim the trees and shrubs and, and clear any uh, uh, foliage from, from view that keeps uh, uh, a place that people can hide behind it. Power sources, you've got your power company. If you lose power, you have auxiliary, your diesel, natural gas, and gasoline-powered generators. Uh, your office inventory should consist of your what's in your buildings, your computers, your files, your transportation vehicles, all of these things should be part of your inventory and sensitive items that are contained in each one of these. Uh, on your communications, uh, you have telephones, cell phones, uh, radio, two-way radio, and, can, and your SCADA systems. Uh, your distribution system inventory, your pumps, pipes, and valves, your different appurtenances such as flush hydrants, meters, regulators, and other vulnerable points are part of your inventory. And, and if you know your system, it's the best way to prevent contamination events and have uh, alternate sources of water in, into play. Uh, there's three different stages of threat management. There's possible, credible, and confirmatory. There's two side-by-side -side activities. That's evaluating the threat and what your response is going to be, your response decisions, your also the survivability of a, of a biological agent in the water determines the severity of an event. Uh, they're often difficult to detect. 
Uh, smallpox is a pathogen that has a high rate of secondary transmission. There's different examples of biotoxins, and that would be botulinum, anthrax, smallpox, plague, and e Ebola toxins. Uh, FEMA lists uh, your disasters in three categories, uh, natural, technological, and national security. Uh, the natural hazards are determined by geological locations, such as uh, around uh, Utah and the Salt Lake Valley. There's a uh, risk of earthquake, uh, and, uh, and, and there are uh, events that do not occur as a result of something man-made. Uh, others require, require sources behind the capability of local government, and a cyber attack would be considered technological. SARA, which is a Superfund Amendments and Reauthorization Act, is legislation that requires utilities to report the chemicals that are stored on their sites. Credibility, uh, when you, uh, you're trying to determine the credibility of a threat, and that determine, that's a collection of samples uh, for analysis, and analytical confirmation is the most reliable means of confirming uh, a water contamination event. Incident command is a model tool for command and control and coordination of an emergency. Uh, the emergency response is uh, a response to live property and environmental incidents. The preparedness phase in an emergency management plan is part of, that's what an emergency response plan is, is it's preparedness part. Uh, actions that the water system would take during an event or a disaster are part of that plan. It sets up a command structure. It, ass it assigns specific responsibilities. Your emergency response plan should be updated annually and prepared by local officials. And elevating the threat level should be based on evidence such as security breach along with signs of contamination and abnormal test results. Uh, emergency response and action plan should be short and concise. Uh, it, can it shouldn't be detailed. It should be uh, a, a list of... Uh, possible uh, responses. You want to list your critical customers and it should be accessed by need to know only people. Uh, the four, there's four phases in, a, in emergency response planning. There's preparedness, that's having a plan, response or the initial actions taking during a disaster, your recovery phase, and then there's mitigation which lessens the, the harmful effects of an emergency uh, in the future is, is an action you would take. Is, part of that. Uh, alarm systems are, is a system that notifies authorities of, a pers uh, of personnel intru of intrusion. It should be considered for uh, buildings and tanks. The key control, your interlocking keys like uh, this here is, uh, is a key that is put on by a contractor. Make sure you, when they leave you uh, remove that key. Uh, that you should have a key control to critical components of the system. Uh, you should have accountability. Anybody who's got a key to your different sites should uh, be accountable for uh, those keys and you should keep track of that. You can put do not duplicate uh, engraved on your keys and you want to change your passcodes and retrieve the keys when the employees uh, leave or terminate it. Uh, neighborhood involvement uh, it raises awareness around your facilities with flyers, your bill stuffers. You want to notify your neighborhood watch programs. Disposable cameras could be possible to uh, give to the neighbors to have them monitor uh, activity on there and take pictures if there is anything. Uh, give a call down list to the neighbors of whom they should call if there is somebody uh, on their facilities. Exterior lighting is a good deterrent. Uh, intruders can be uh, seen and detected. Uh, motion sensors also provide a way to turn on cameras or lights, and you have your perimeter lighting also. Uh, all facilities should have perimeter security fencing. They should be inspected frequently. You should secure them with chains and tamper-proof proof locks, and then you should have your jersey barriers uh, should be considered to guard against accidental or intentional vehicle intrusion. Uh, Cybersecurity. Hardwired systems are more secure than wireless ones. Uh, your secondary passwords are designed to ensure at least two people are aware of changes being made. Uh, you should change your password every 90 days on your computer. 
should have firewall protection, virus software, and a cyber attack is an example of a technological threat. Backup files should be stored at an off-site uh, location. Treatment plants, uh, chemicals delivered with per should be delivered with personnel present, chemicals with tamper-proof seals, and the, uh, and the driver's ID uh, should be checked by the operator. Uh, you should discuss security with your suppliers, and they should provide a background check of their employees. Uh, you want to store hazardous chemicals properly, uh, monitor your raw water, and match all delivered goods with the manifest and the purchase order. Your warning signs uh, should have secure and restricted access signs on there. Uh, the facility is protected by federal law. Uh, any unauthorized access is prohibited and prosecuted. Uh, employees only and then authorized uh, personnel only. A public awareness, uh, letting your public know that you should have a, uh, if there's a truck in there, it should have the, the placards on the side or the or the uh, the name of the system, your system logos, uh, any critical items such as maps and computers should be removed from your vehicles, and not left in them. Uh, methods of estimating the contamination uh, spread is is a water flow analysis, hydraulic modeling. Uh, you've got uh, areas of customer complaints on a map, field analysis. And precursors to a contamination event can be online monitors uh, that show changes in pH and chlorine residual. Uh, sarin is, a, an ex, is an example of chemical contamination. Uh, the distribution system, the use of fire uh, hydrants and valves, you can put locks on them. Uh, you want to monitor the system for a constant, constant positive pressure and uh, implement a good black flow prevention program. Uh, you want to have a checklist to handle threatening phone calls. Uh, you, um, how to handle those suspicious uh, activity reports. And then the use of reverse 911 to warn the public. So you should have a good checklist for uh, people answering the phones. Sensitive information, you want to take any sensitive information off of your website. Uh, maps and records and things like that are, should be labeled confidential or protected. And then your, you should secure your vehicle's maps with sensitive information tools, keys, and things like that uh, that could be stolen. Uh, sh uh, anything that is sensitive should not be left in the vehicle. If you contact, you, sh you should know how to contact your customers within 24 hours of an emergency. You want to have one media person. You want to contact nursing homes, hospitals, schools, or anywhere where there's immune compromised people that may reside inside. Uh, your public relations, uh, one person should be your spokesperson. You want to restrict sensitive information uh, and it, that is distributed. Uh, the procedure for public notification, you want to have a procedure to notify the public. And you want to have procedures for addressing customer complaint calls. 